Not every race car is built by a team of professional engineers. We're here with Justin from CER to get some more insight into the development of his MRS. The MRS, or the third generation MR2, is somewhat of an underappreciated chassis, I think because maybe the SW20, the previous generation, had some renowned um, nasty handling characteristics. Why did you start with an MRS? What was the kind of driving force behind using this as a chassis for a build like this? Uh, initially, it was actually my uh, my mechanic sold it to me. So on the idea of that it'd actually make a really good track car because there's so much of it that you can unbolt and so much that can be just swapped around being basic Toyota Corolla kind of stuff. So it's really just a front wheel drive with the engine and the uh, gearbox in the wrong place. So where did the car start at and... Obviously, what steps have been taken to end up where you are now? Uh, so it started off as a, a grey import. So it was actually a manual factory car that got imported. And then, um, yeah, got, uh, bought that off, uh, yeah, mechanic mate. And then decided to start tracking with it. And then basically just fell in love with the chassis, the way it, the way it, uh, the way it drives. And then it's like all cars that you start taking to the track. You're just like, oh, I wish it did this or I wish it did that. And then you start adding bits and pieces to improve what you're doing sort of thing. And then it eventually just gets out of control. <laughs> so, so the stage we're at now, I mean, the underpinnings are still very much a MRS. Can you maybe walk us through for the start the, the drive line? Yep. Uh, okay. So it normally runs a uh, standard C60 housing with a gear set that we've um, imported from a company called Jubu. So it's still factory mounting and casing and stuff. And then the engine is just a 2ZZ engine, which has been built by ourselves. So obviously a machine shop has like, done all the uh, important stuff of the decking and fitting sleeves and that sort of stuff. But the actual assembly and all that kind of stuff we do ourselves is a learning kind of tool. So for those who aren't familiar with an MRS, it's factory 1ZZ, which is a 1.8 litre, right? It's a 2ZZ, it's much the same story. What's the kind of difference? Uh, it's not essentially the same sort of engine. So dimension-wise, it's sort of the, the same sort of thing. The only real difference is that the uh, 2ZZ has lift. So you, they change the cams on it, and then you get a little bit more power out of it. So nothing overly, uh, overly much better, I guess. <laughs> so drivetrain like engine gearbox wise it's very much similar to the factory arrangement but there's obviously boost added to the equation now yeah no so we actually still one run one factory engine mount and then the rest are factory engine mounts but just with poly bushings installed in them just to stop the uh, engine twisting and hitting stuff and breaking things and forced induction what's the kind of setup there and roughly what kind of power are we looking at at the moment so it runs a Gen 2 3582R or just that standard sort of turbo, nothing overly fancy on it. And then on like a kill mode or high boost or whatnot is 35 pound and about 450 kilowatt at the wheels. Pretty pretty healthy power number and a vehicle like this, do you know the, the weight of the vehicle as it sits? Uh, when we got weight here, it was 940 kilos. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's fun. And with the gear set like you talked about before, I imagine it's pretty pokey. Yeah, so the gear set that we run is a really, really close ratio gear set. So I think it's a 1,000 RPM and 900 RPM between gears. So it keeps it up. Well, these kinds of engines, you need to keep high in the rev range because they drop off power. And if you're running a really large turbo, you also drop off power. <laughs> so so it's the gearbox was designed around just keeping the car on boost. So a little 1.8 litre trying to make that much power, it's sort of you need to stay high in the rev range for as long as possible. And um, we'll just move to the rest of the car, kind of the chassis. And like you mentioned at the start, every single panel of this car can be unbolted. And it looks like all of them have been unbolted and changed. What's the kind of setup we're looking at now? Uh, so it was a case of, um, I uh, well, once we did realize that, yeah, everything is unboltable, we uh, just started looking around to find different kinds of uh, body kits that were offered out there for wide body. Because I guess the big thing with this car is you can put all the power into it that you want, but it's got tiny little wheel arches and trying to pit, put decent sized uh, tires in it is is fairly difficult without like destroying most of your fenders sort of thing. So when we were looking around for wide body kits, we came across a few different ones and we fell on the, uh, the APR one. So I bought a genuine APR kit and then modified it to what we're trying to do and then had that remolded in carbon fiber so that we didn't have to paint the car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, related to the bodywork, there's also an aero package on the car. I can see we got a splitter, canards, rear wing. What's the development of the aero package kind of been? Where did it start from and, and where are we at now? 
I guess the big thing is actually coming here. So uh, to Wall Time Attack was we originally attended with just a of like Aero with uh, sorry with an Evo with just basic sort of stuff on it, and then you get a chance to wander the pits, take a look at cars, and see what everybody else has done. And then you start to look at images online, and then you start to lead into YouTube videos on people who are designing stuff, and you start to just pick up on really ba- like the basics of what works and like air dams and splitters and wings and wing angle and angle of attack and stalling it. That's like the really sort of basic stuff. And then we're just like, if with our car, it was just a case of just put the the basic stuff on there without having to go into the intricate detail of fine tuning stuff so that we know if you have a like a splitter with a flat face in front of it to create like a dam and then to also put kick ups on it to diffuse air to slow down and all that kind of like just really basic sort of stuff so and then flat underneath the car and then try and slowly bring that up to slow it down at the back so that it meets up with the rear wing just it's not nothing overly fancy but it seems to have worked so and then we just tried different parts we've been through a couple of iterations of rear wing that didn't match quite with the uh, diffuser so we had like I guess you'd call stalling air behind it and they wouldn't meet and then the new one that we've got seems to actually work. We've done some um, days uh, testing in the rain and been able to see the spray patterns coming off. And we're like, oh, cool, it's actually working. So <laughs> it's, it's a lot of trial and error with it. But if you do the basics and you just fiddle with the basics, it's sort of you can't really go too wrong with it. Yeah, I think fundamental best practices. And even if you don't have CFD or some aero engineer guiding you through everything, there's still some, some solid understanding that you can get and testing as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's just sort of, there's a lot of off the shelf parts, I guess, like rear wing. You know, probably most people aren't going to design their own element sort of thing and put it on there. But so most wings will, they'll describe to you whether it's a clean air wing or a 3D wing, it needs, behind, it needs to be behind a roof structure and stuff like that. And they'll give you basic angles to run it at to start with. And then you sort of, yeah, I guess work, work around that kind of thing. So I want to carry on that theme into the rest of the vehicle as well and suspension development. The MRS is McPherson strut, all four corners. Nothing's been changed too much there. I assume a fair amount of adjustable components though. Yeah, so once again, most of it is off the shelf. The only thing that's been custom is the front lower control arms, just so that we can adjust the caster in it for the bigger wheels to get it away from binding on the rear wheel arch. Because once you get to a big tire, you start hitting stuff under compression. So that way, and we required a custom part for, but like the rear arms are all just off the shelf adjustable stuff. And then the... Um, the coilovers are actually from uh, one of the sponsors who helps our team out from Shockworks who's spent a fair bit of time with us developing stuff and trying to make the car work with different kinds of spring rates and damper settings and that sort of thing. So, like, but in regards to the actual, I guess, the core part of it, we actually run the car at essentially factory ride height. It's just the body that's been dropped dropped around and the aero worked around the factory ride height because if it sort of works from a factory, you assume they've got the right, the right position because I do know that if you lower the car too far, you throw off the um, the handling pretty bad with it, so just yeah. <laughs> so the kind of main thing that drew you to the car originally, I mean, it's still very much an MRS, but you've made some significant changes in other areas. That main draw of the handling that you really liked of it is that still maintained? Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Like the, what I do, like I, the feeling of driving a, like a mid-engine car is just it just feels so different to your regular front wheel drive or normal fr car it's just a really addictive way that the car loads up and launches or the braking ability that you have with the weight and then just setting the car up around that and how it shoots out of corners or between stuff it just feels completely different and that's the bit that i absolutely love about it and that it actually is very 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 close i guess just at different speeds to like a standard road car you can still get the same feeling out of a standard road car just turned up the volume a little bit, I guess. You mentioned braking a little bit there. What type of brake package is on the car? Uh, so it's actually just running. So I've had um, uh, dog bones made up so I can run uh, Porsche calipers. So I'm just running off-the-shelf box to Porsche calipers front and rear. And then the rotors, it was just we found a, I guess a, a cheap rotor that we could run and then had hats made up to fit that rotor for the, the sizes that we wanted to run. So it runs the same front to rear. Uh, we just run a um, a manual pedal box with an adjuster in it so that we can set the, the balance up, which is probably the critical part of the whole MR experience is getting your brake balance. And handling balance, I assume, as well. Um, sway bars, spring rates, things like that. Have you adjusted that as you've gone to kind of dial in the balance? Yeah, so there's been a lot of that. That part's probably taken many years for us to, first of all, start to understand the car. 
and then also how they react with aero load versus mechanical grip sort of thing it's like two very different things and you need the the suspension to do two very different things at high speed aero grip versus low speed like mechanical grip trying to get out of the hole kind of thing so and the same with the guys uh shockworks have been like absolutely phenomenal in like helping us trying to understand what we're actually trying to do and revalving bits and pieces to try and make it make it do what it's meant to do I think there's a kind of common theme here that's probably common to a lot of grassroots teams, but you're competing here, you know, at a world stage and, and getting good results. But something that you mentioned earlier was you've got this team of friends helping you. None of you are, you know, motorsport engineers. Pretty much our entire team sends emails for a living. So got a program. The closest we've got to a mechanic is a panel beater. So who's actually our uh, head mechanic for the day? So, <laughs> um, and then we rope in for this event, we rope in one qualified mechanic. So, <laughs> but other than that, the actual initial build is all just our, um, all just our, uh, uh, like my mates, basically. Obviously there's the, you need a machine shop to do stuff or people who manufacture like suspension or like our tuner, like sure we could probably learn to tune, but we're going to be nowhere near as good as somebody who knows what they're doing. And they also understand what you're trying to do and trying to achieve and how to set that up so i think it's like a big thing of 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 if your job is dedicated to a certain thing we'll never be as good as them so that was like i guess that's a shout can i do my shout out to uh cms performance who actually has been an absolute lifesaver he's been on the uh he's been uh sending log files back with uh one of our uh our, our desktop programmers <laughs> to update the files on here because we had a lot of offload um issues originally on practice and then they've just been sending files backwards and forwards from the car or whatever just to fine tune. Now the car's driving absolutely amazing. So, yeah, I guess that kind of comes down to it at the end after these years of development and changing everything and dialing it in, regardless, the results are the same and the proof's in the pudding. And here you are at World Time Attack turning laps. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> no, awesome. Well, thanks for that. It's given some good insight into the working through that process and the chassis that we, you know, it's the only one here today that we don't often see. If people want to keep up with your progress and the development of the car, where are they best to do that? Uh, well, we have our uh, Facebook page of Close Enough Racing or our Instagram page is uh, CER MR2 Spider. Perfect. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.